Hi friends! So today I'm going to be talking to y'all about bowerbirds and why they are super super cool. So they are truly starting off the interior design majors of the bird family. Um, within the Talonarinkidae family, there are 20 different species of bowerbirds that are all centered around the continent of Oceania, which is going to be in the area by the Philippines, Indonesia, Australia, that kind of area. And even though these birds look really different from each other, all of the males participate in this ritualistic mating practice of elaborately decorating bowers hence the name. These are kind of like fancy bachelor pads for birds because they don't explicitly live in these little nesting areas. They're really just for show. And they'll decorate them with colorful berries, rocks, flowers, trash, anything. The one on the screen there, he has a little money note. Um, anything that they like aesthetically, they will decorate their space with. And so to understand this practice of how it arose in this group of organisms, researchers have turned their attention to the role that sexual selection plays in both the development of these characteristics as well as speciation within the Talonarinkidae family. So as we learned a little review of sexual selection, it is a mode of natural selection where traits associated with fitness are the primary driver of mate choice. This comes in two parts, intersexual selection where one sex is more choosy than the other and will select a mate based on fitness enhancing traits and intrasexual selection where mates of the same sex will compete for access to mates of the opposite sex. For bowerbirds, like in many other organisms, the female is the primary driver of selection towards attractive phenotypes within the population. This is due to the fact that females, like in many other organisms, have the highest biological investment in reproduction. So they become the ones that drive these appealing characteristics. These attractive traits are often going to be secondary sex characteristics like songs, physical adornments in bright colors, or even performances, like in the case of bowerbirds. And they usually correspond with the physical health of the potential mate and therefore his ability to produce equally strong offspring. And while bowerbirds perform this unique courtship display, it seems to indicate something beyond just physical health. Different species of bowerbirds show specific preferences for colors and decoration patterns, but why does that matter? Researchers believe that female selection of mates who can produce the most appealing and intricate bowers indicates that male general intelligence is actually the primary trait by which females select their mates. Researchers at the University of Maryland observed that different species of bowerbirds have large amounts of variation in the display preferences of females, despite them being relatively geographically concentrated. This seems to suggest that the triple S hypothesis would be applicable to this family of birds. The triple S hypothesis, or the speciation by sexual selection hypothesis, suggests that the uh, preferences of females may cause prezygotic isolation strong enough to lead to reproductive isolation without extreme changes in morphology or genome. To test to see if this was the case in bowerbirds, the team studied two geographically separated populations of Volgokop bowerbirds, I know, very German, in Indonesia, the Fak Fak and the Adfak bowerbirds named for the mountain ranges to which their populations are most closely located on the island. Uh, researchers gave the Fafak and the Arfak males the same set of materials varying in color and shape to decorate the bowers with. So despite them being the exact same species, morphologically similar as you can see in the pictures and genomically almost identical, the group selected different colors and shapes to add to their nests. The Arfak group would pick um, dark blue and dark red colors to put in their bowers, whereas the Farfak birds almost avoided those entirely. And when females from the Arfak population were exposed to both groups of males, the females would refuse to copulate with the Farfak males whose bowers did not contain those key colors as indicators, seemingly, of the Arfak group. Um, 
The researchers then surmised that if the females avoid reproducing with males of different populations, this could eventually lead to behavioral reproductive isolation and therefore a speciation event to occur between these two populations, despite them, you know, being very, very genetically similar. This fits in perfectly with the triple S hypothesis and serves as an explanation for why there are so many species of bowerbirds in such a tight geographic location that still practice this same ritualistic behavior while also having an extreme amount of variation within it. With so much diversity as we observed in display traits, the question arises of what makes these characteristics so special to females. A male's ability to learn the preferences of females shows their ability to make judgments and perform other cognitive tasks, right? So this compelled a new team of researchers at the University of Maryland to look into the reproductive success of male satin bowerbirds that performed well on problem-solving tasks. Uh, female satin bowers, bower birds tend to avoid red objects. So in order to determine the problem solving abilities of males, the researchers permanently affixed red objects to the bowers of eligible bachelors in order to see if they would take steps to cover it up and compared that then to the number of successful copulations that male experienced over the course of two years. Um, as you can see on the slide, there's kind of a scale to um, show the degree of effort the males were willing to put into devising a way to cover up these distasteful red objects. And the team uh, determined that um, problem solving task success was not primarily motivated by mating success, meaning that males had some sort of innate intelligence and that they probably learned that red was bad from somewhere. Additionally, the males that were able to successfully complete cognitive tasks were eventually more reproductively successful as well. It seems to indicate that females are attracted to the most visually appealing bower, not because they're attracted to pretty things, but because they're drawn to males that show this innate intelligence and that have the genes to produce equally intelligent offspring. So this study showed that while no male is going to be explicitly taught what is preferable to females in its population, the selection of females within that species will drive male learning of what is attractive to potential mates. And the origins of this behavior is likely partially influenced by geographic location and social learning, similarly to the development of other birds' mating calls or songs. Not only are bower birds cool, they are smart, and they can seemingly make strategic, sexually selective decisions like many other high cognitive functioning organisms. And you know, this shows us that even though we thought for a while they just did it for funsies and to look cute and pretty, they actually are much more intelligent than we had originally thought.